Right now, we're in Ukraine, and today we've given out the 200 million shoebox to a little girl here, so it's a lot of fun. It's a privilege for us to be able to come and to help the people as much as we can. Every box is an importance, every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. There's so much joy that one gift box can give. They really experience the love of Jesus. something as simple as the shoebox because God uses it to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got a full box on the team. This is such an amazing time. We're so happy to be here. This shoebox gift will impact a child's life all year round. We never dreamed we'd have an army of men and women who would come to make this program happen. This is what it's all about. Other than that, These shoeboxes go to 120 different countries where pastors and missionaries are going to use them to bring the gospel to kids. So you may think it's just a simple gift at Christmas time, but it's the gift of the gospel, the story of Jesus Christ. When that shoebox leaves that distribution center and it goes around the world, that's not just one person. That's the body of Christ joined together, delivering the good news of the gospel. They go by plane, they go by ship, they go by riverboat, they go by camels, they go by motorbikes. And these boxes go to some of the most remote areas of the world, and every box counts. After receiving shoe boxes, children are invited to participate in the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program. These children have just completed 12 lessons in the Greatest Journey. I believe that discipleship is the key, and they are now followers of Christ. They will tell their friends about Jesus. I wanted to teach her about the Word of God, and when she came to my church, she received a gift box. For a long time, I asked my mom for a blanket. When I opened my shoe box, I found a blanket in it. When I came home, I showed it to my mom, and she said it was great. I told her about Jesus. Now me, my mom, my grandma, and Kemi go to church together. I am certain of one thing. God is my savior. Every box counts. Every box touches a child. It's like a snowflake. There's not one shoebox that is the same. And we are reaching <laughs> millions of children with the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> You will reach the heart of their parents, you will reach the heart of their family, and then you will touch the community. We are seeing churches being planted, and more and more churches are being built. We will do whatever it takes to reach the ends of the earth with the gospel. That gift box is the beginning into their hearts. How these gifts touch the lives of these children, the joy, the smiles, it changes lives. Every year we see tens of thousands of children disciple, and we couldn't do this without you, so thank you for packing the boxes, thank you for praying for these children around the world. God bless you, and keep packing those boxes. Amen. Amen. The heart of a child you will reach the heart of the parents you will reach the heart of the family then you will touch the community yes. my name is Rhonda Moore and I'm the area coordinator for South Central Ohio area team we cover Adams Brown Clinton Fayette and Highland counties thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to come and share the excitement of what is Operation Christmas Child I would like to start with Romans 10, 13. And you all probably already know this, and you can say it with me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. We all know this. How do we know this? Because we've heard this. 
Um, I've been raised in church my whole life. I, that's all I've known is not just going to church, but being a church. Um, if you think about where we live today, you can go to Walmart and go down their book aisle and find a Bible. All along the streets, I have, I was coming home from Eastgate one day down 32, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the scripture that is on the side of Route 32. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have churches on every corner. We see crosses everywhere. We cannot escape hearing Jesus. But let me go on in verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? The luxuries that we have right here in the United States to be able to come together to worship, to have the name of Jesus shared. Uh, unfortunately, many times we hear it even as a curse word. But now try to imagine a place where Jesus has never been mentioned. There are millions of people and thousands of villages and communities that have never heard the name of Jesus. Right. Well, that's where a shoebox comes in. Because with the shoebox, you can get in to these places where most pastors or missionaries cannot go. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of the background of what is Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child was started in 1990 in Wales by a man, and they were the pastor, Dave Cook. He packed shoeboxes for orphanages, and he would travel from orphanages with little boxes, and it would have candy and just little fun things for children that were orphans. Well, as the war went on, it got too much for one person. So he got in touch with Franklin Graham through Samaritan's Purse and asked, could you please help? That first year, 28,000 boxes were packed here in the United States and sent to Bosnia to the orphans. This year celebrates our 30th year of Operation Christmas Child. That first year, 28,000 boxes were packed. Last year in 19, or 19, oh my goodness, I started saying 1922. No, no, no. 2022, last year, 10 and a half million shoe boxes were packed and delivered, and they're still being delivered today. Um, I'm getting updates still, and it's on the regular basis where they're showing children that are receiving their boxes today. When we talk about the 30 years, um, as a year-round volunteer, I, since I'm area coordinator, I am a year-round volunteer. Julia is part of our team. She's on church relations. We have church relations prayer team members. We have community um, relations team members. When you become a year-round volunteer, they have, which I'm not sure if this church is in a conference where you go and you have a conference. Well, Operation Christmas Child has a conference every year. Unfortunately, when I came on was during COVID, so everything was done online. So we had an online conference where you sat in your house and you got to partake. This year, though, this past March, it was the last, like the last day of March or the first couple days of April, we had a conference. And it was in Orlando, Florida, but it was a global conference. So we had people from all around the world. Let me tell you, I felt like I was in heaven. It was phenomenal. There was 4,000 people in attendance to this conference. I, got, I was lucky I made my reservations early, so I got to stay in the hotel where they had the conference. And... I almost, just almost felt sorry for those three or four families that vacationed during that time because it was a flood of Operation Christmas Child and there was Jesus everywhere. <laughs> um, so while we were there, um, it, it was pretty, it was, it was phenomenal because, so you have set times and places that you're supposed to be. Well, me and the girl that traveled with me, 
she's on our prayer team and she's a pastor's wife. We kind of crashed a breakfast that we were supposed to be in. We didn't know that. We weren't doing it on purpose. It was an international breakfast. So we sat at the table with a woman from, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of Montenegro. There was a woman from Croatia. There was a pastor from um, Africa. There was a man from Sudan. There was another man from Lebanon. We sat at the table and got to hear their stories. Incredible. And I can't help but think here we are this morning. It's raining, but we're sitting in a dry church. Yeah. The air conditioners are running. It's cool. In the winter time, you have heat. These people do not have these luxuries. They don't have these luxuries. But let me tell you, they love Jesus. Yes. They love Jesus. Mm -hmm. But while we were there, um, one of the services that we had, we had morning devotions with Jim Cimbala from Brooklyn Tabernacle. Um, we've had different people to come in and speak, and it was amazing. But we had our 30-year celebration with 4,000 people sitting in this auditorium. And it was kind of wild because all these people from different areas that didn't really speak clearly and they weren't able to understand a lot of what was being said. So we would be in these services and, and the spirit of the Lord was just so strong and everybody was there for one purpose and one purpose only, to worship the Lord. And every night you could hear like a woman speaking and me and Kelly kept looking at each other. So we turned around and there was a man that was praising the Lord, but he had an earpiece in that was translating into his language. And he was just, you could hear her in English, and he was praising the Lord in his language. And it was just the most phenomenal thing to be able to sit there. And Franklin Graham, during this year 30 celebration, this is what he said. Okay, and this is exciting. There was 28,000 boxes packed the first year. Over the past 30 years, 209 million shoe boxes have been collected. Amen. 200, and that's, I think about 209 million children have heard the gospel message. And the majority of these children, it was the first and only time they'd ever heard about Jesus. This is what Operation Christmas Child is about. Yes. And Franklin Graham was excited, telling all these things. And, and this year they got to hand out the 200 million shoe box in Ukraine. So they go into war-torn Ukraine, and they have an event, and a little girl got the shoebox. Um, and it, to me, it's pretty incredible how that all worked out. But he was talking about 209, that's amazing, these boxes of these children. He said, 30 years. He said, I think back, it's been 30 years. He said, this, this is what really hit me and impacted me. But I don't think we have another 30 years. He said, I just don't think we have another 30 years. And he said, we have to work. Yeah. There's a work to be done. Mm -hmm. There are children that need to hear the gospel message. Right. Mm -hmm. And throughout the conference, and it was, it, was, it was good because you kept hearing the speakers that would speak saying, night's coming. And I, I, that verse in John 9, 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Yeah. Night's coming. Right. Night is coming. Yes. We have to work. And let me tell you, packing a shoebox, you can get a lot of work done yeah. by packing a shoebox. And I want to tell you, OCC, Operation Christmas Child, it is a project of Samaritan Purse that brings joy and hope of eternal life yes. to children around the world. Yes. Millions of people who prepare shoebox gifts, they pray and they serve with Operation Christmas Child, are impacting millions of children and their families every year. Operation Christmas Child is also the largest evangelistic outreach ministry in the world. This is why I love Operation Christmas Child. There is never a time when a child gets a box that they don't hear the gospel message of Jesus. They have these events, um, and you saw it in the video, when they were having these distribution events, people are trained. And here's another thing that, that just really, that really stuck out to me too. Because these people that are receiving the shoe boxes are dedicated. 
they know when they get those shoe boxes, they get to share the gospel message. So these people that are going to be doing these distributions and handing out these and having these little, it's kind of like a vacation Bible school. They have to go for training. Samaritan's Purse brings them in and they train people how to present the gospel to children. This isn't just something where we sit in the boxes and hope for the best. No, it's a mission. It's a ministry. And it is taken very seriously, even though it's a lot of fun. And it is a lot of fun. It is a ministry. It's a mission of God. You'll see them holding up the big banners where they're teaching them who Jesus is. And there's, there was, I heard stories where children have been given a box and they will come to the Americans to ask them, can you please tell Jesus that packed my box, thank you? Because they heard the story of Jesus and Jesus has a gift for you, a gift of, and they think that there's a man named Jesus that is packing their boxes because they don't know. Yeah. Then there's another opportunity to say, hey, Jesus is in heaven and he can live in your heart. Yeah. And so they get to go through, they hear Jesus. Amen. So these people that are trained, Many of these people that are trained to give these gospel presentations travel hours to be trained. They have to travel hours to go to this centralized location to be trained on how to present the gospel message in a fun way to these children. Sometimes they have to go by motorbike. Sometimes they go by bicycle. Sometimes they walk. Sometimes they, it takes some of them hours and they do it with a joyful heart because they know that they are part of God's plan to reach children around the world. Mm. Operation Christmas Child is not a relief effort. It's an evangelistic tool to share the gospel message of Jesus. This year, Operation Christmas Child is focusing on unreached people groups. They have a mission now. Um, I think this 2023 was the fifth year so five years ago, they started a mission um, to reach all the thousand Pacific islands. <laughs> this year was able to reach every child on those islands. So it took five years of planning and five years of distributing boxes. Most of these in these Pacific islands, they don't have running water. They don't have electricity. They live very, very, very primal. They're just very, you know, very simplistic. Most of these most of the, and the majority of these islands doesn't know anything about Jesus. They didn't have churches. They were, you know, they are working people, but they didn't have a knowledge of Jesus. Now they have churches <coughs> set up on these villages and on these islands because of a shoebox. Churches have been established Amen. in these islands. So now they're going on and they're, wor they're working to reach the unreached people group. The unreached people group is considered um, people that are maybe resistant or hostile to the gospel message, so we can't, they're not reached. It could be because they're so remote that you can't get to them. Um, there is, and we will talk about it here in a minute, but there's many, many villages that people, you just can't get there. They're so remote that they just can't get there. Sometimes it's a language barrier where just nobody can speak their language. So these are people groups that is unreached people groups. There are 7,000 unreached people groups in the world today. I have a hard time wrapping my brain around 7,000, yes. not just 7,000 people. So there's millions of people that have never been reached with the gospel message of Jesus. How is that possible? But it is. It is there are still 7,000. So this is what they're doing. And this is what I find amazing. When I was at Global, I was getting pictures with all of these different people, and we were exchanging. And, and I do keep in touch with one pastor from, okay, I'm going to try to say the name of it. It is Burkina Faso, but Burkina Faso, Ugandugu, West Africa. And, and I probably butchered that all the pieces. Um, but I actually speak with him quite often through Messenger. And some of their villages, they're so remote. But when I was talking with him, he was, I said, oh my goodness, this is so exciting to be able to meet you. I mean, this is, I mean, to me, it was like meeting, 
which I've never been a superstar, and I don't know that I would be as, I was fangirling these people because I was just so amazed to see their stories of having nothing, but how they love Jesus. They love Jesus so much, and they just want to spread the gospel. And this is what they say, hey, hey, uh-uh, you're our hero. Without you, we wouldn't have shoeboxes. We wouldn't have the ministry. Because of packing the shoeboxes, this is how they get their ministry spread abroad. And here's the, this is what they're doing. These people groups, like in Burkina Faso, there's many villages that are that you can't get to because it's impassable by car, that you have to walk through jungles to get to them. They have found that there are people groups, and these men that have received boxes, and a lot of these are, these churches that are founded are founded because of boxes. They are now saying, I want to go. And they have found people that have never heard the gospel, and their plan is to go to these people. Last year, through Operation Christmas Child, 99 unreached people groups were contacted and had gotten shoe boxes. So 99 of those that had never heard. So there's different reasons. That when I was looking at, while we were there, it was kind of cool, where you look at, they had a map. And it showed all the unreached people groups, all the different areas all around the world. And, you know, the United States was just all white. There was no, But then you'd see little spots here and there. Even in the United States, we have unreached people groups. And it could be where um, a lot of people have come in from other countries, and they kind of live in a community together, and people don't go into those communities because they don't speak the language. They're here, and they, in the United States, have not heard the gospel message of Jesus. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. So I do want to um, tell you a story. Don't show that picture yet. I do want to tell you a story about one of these groups. One of these unreached people groups is the Esra Bara people in Madagascar. We have, um, through Operation Christmas Child as a year-round volunteer, we have a quarterly day of prayer and fasting. And on that day, we have a Zoom call so we can all join together and we pray together. It's about 90 minutes and it's people from all around the world. Every time I get on, there's at least a thousand people that's on this call from around the world and people speaking in their language and they will pray in their language and, and they will tell their stories. And So this past May, our prayer focus was for Pastor Soha. Pastor Soha was not part of this Bara people, but he has been trying to get into this village with these people. In this village, all together, there's 15 different tribes in this one village. The Bara people are known for um, being violent. They're known for thievery. They are known that they do not allow outsiders. They have killed people. They do not allow people to come in. That is not part of their tribe. But Pastor Soha, God laid it on his heart, and he was praying, God, help me to get in, help me to get in. So he finally was able to get in and talk with the chief, the elder, and said, he didn't bring his Bible, he didn't, he said, how can I help you and your people? And he said, we need a school. We need schools because if our children are going to be educated, we have to send them away. They were sending their children away to be able to be educated. He said, I would love to have schools in our villages so our children can learn. So Pastor Soha went to work. And he found children that had left to go to school, gotten their education. And of course, now they're young men and women. He got these young men and women together and started working with them on how to be teachers. So there's nine of them. So they have nine villages now that have teachers. And they have set up schools to teach their children. And when I say they set up schools, some of them are under a tree. That's where 30 and 40 kids will gather under a tree. Or in a little building that just has a roof on it. It's very, very minimal. But they have a school. And these young men and women that Pastor Soha has trained up to be teachers has given their hearts and lives to the Lord. So now they are followers of Jesus. Well, this was an opportunity for Pastor Soha to get shoe boxes for the first time ever into these villages. Pastor Soha received 2,500 shoe boxes. Very excited. So his prayer was, I have no transportation 
to get these boxes from point A to point B. Please pray that God will provide transportation. We need transportation. He said, and pray that God will protect the boxes and those that are transported because we know that there are violent people. We know that they're thievery. He said, please pray. This was on a Wednesday that we had this prayer meeting. So that Wednesday morning, we had all gone together for prayer for Pastor Soha. While we were gathering on Zoom with prayer, we got a message from Pastor Soha. And he said, I need you to pray, 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 pray. The flood rains have started. And he said, even if I get transportation, here's the thing. It was going to take three to four days with a vehicle to get to this location because there were no roads. They had to go through the jungles. They had to go through very remote places. And he said, the rains have started. And he said, there's no way that we can get through. Please pray. Please pray. He said, the events are starting now. Please pray. Please pray. So Tuesday... So this was on a Wednesday, Tuesday of the next week, Caitlin. Is that the chart? I want you to look at this. Tuesday of the next week, somebody provided the truck for the transportation. And to me, that looks like a new truck. Yeah. Look what God did. He didn't just give something ratty. Look what he provided. Yeah. This is what God did. This is what God is doing all the time through the shoebox ministry. God provides in the most amazing ways. Um, I can tell you a story of, matter of fact, Ukraine, where they were, all the people were, they gathered um, the neighbors of the church there that is, works with Operation Christmas Child and stayed in the basement. There was 165 people, I believe it was, that was in the basement for like eight days. They did a shoebox event while they were all there and in ukraine their generator had gone down well you can't just buy pieces in the middle of a war when they opened up the shoe boxes they found they had flashlights the kids got flashlights and then so everything they needed and he said even in those boxes they received tools they received all kinds of everything they needed to fix the generator came in the boxes tell me that god didn't work that way. amen this is what god does Okay, we'll go to the next picture. Okay, I, I'm trying to remember which picture of which here. Okay, so with this one, you can see here the young man that has been trained, and he's showing, look, this is, this is like, look at all these kids. I mean, look at these kids, but this is what I want you to notice too. Look at all the adults. Yes. Look at all the parents. It ain't just the babies that's getting the, the presentation of the gospel. Right. Yeah. Look at who's getting to hear the Amen. presentation of the gospel message. Mm. So there, look at all the intent of the children listening to the gospel message being presented. Can we go ahead and go to the next one? Look at that face. Look at that yeah. little girl who received her box. And if you'll notice, there's the shoe box, but before she gets it's right on top, it's called the greatest gift. I read through, I've been part of this for a couple of years now with Operation Christmas Child, and I have yet to read through this little book. Matter of fact, I didn't even know I had it. I, anyway, I'm terrible. But I read through this last night, and I'm telling you what, I was so overwhelmed reading this. This booklet is written by John telling the story. John is telling the story of my friend Jesus. I'm gonna tell you about my friend Jesus. And so he tells him all these little stories so these kids, most of the time when these kids get these shoe boxes, and this is what I've heard from many, many, many people, to hear the, the excitement of having a shoe box, most kids don't even know what this is because they've never received a gift in their whole lives. For the majority of these children, this will be the only present that they will ever have. We have kids, grandkids. I, I have two grandbabies, one six and one eight. I cannot imagine my child and my grandkids never having a gift. But my kids also know and they have the gift of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To know, and that's what that's called, the greatest gift booklet. Go to the next one, Caitlin. And here's those babies. Ready?
ready to open up their boxes. So all the kids are sitting around. Now when they did, the, they did two distributions. They did one that had five villages together and one that had four villages together because they couldn't go to each individual. So the villages came together. So go to the next one, Caitlin. Okay. Look at that. Look at all the people Amen. that's gathered around hearing the gospel message of Jesus Christ for the first time. First time. First time ever. First time ever. This is what Operation Christmas Child is about. Yeah. This is what Operation Christmas Child is about. And Caitlin, I need you to go to that last um, slide in the 24 hours. So God not only provided transportation, he also stopped the rain. He was able to open the door and provide a way for them to get their boxes. This is the one that gets me every time. This is last year's information that we had received. When you pack a box, every 24 hours, and that's a 24 hour period, 28,775 28, children are gonna hear the gospel message every day. 12,000 of those kids will enroll in the greatest journey. The greatest journey is a 12 week discipleship course. And this is what I said is so great about Samaritan's Purse and Operation Christmas Child. They don't just give you a box, tell you about Jesus, and then leave you alone. No, they do a 12 week discipleship class with these kids. These kids come back for 12 weeks. They learn who Jesus is. They learn about the creation. They learn all these things intimately, and then they tell them, now go tell somebody. At the end, when they graduate, they are required to go tell about Jesus. Yeah. So they go tell people about Jesus. But look at this one. Every 24 hours, 6,699 children give their hearts to Jesus. Amen. That is five children every minute Amen. that accept Jesus as their Savior. Five children Amen. every minute that are pulled out of Satan's grasp. Amen. And we're expanding the kingdom of God. 2.4 million children gave their hearts to Jesus last year because of the shoebox ministry. Now that's just what we know through the great that went through the 12-week discipleship course. We don't know the impact of parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. They say on average, because of the shoebox ministry, 1,000 churches every year are started because of the shoebox ministry. So this is why we pack a box. This is why we pack a box. Because it has, an, 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 oh my goodness, it has such an eternal impact on the kingdom of God. But I do want to share one thing also, is that the blessings are not just on that side of the children that are receiving the boxes. The blessings are on this side of the box also. And I know that my mama won't care if I share a little bit of her story. It'll be eight years ago in September that we lost my dad to pancreatic cancer. And my dad, and that's why I, this is dad's class ring. This isn't my husband's, this is my dad's ring. Um, my dad taught us kids and he raised us kids up that you didn't just go to church, you are the church. You participate in church, you were there. Whenever the church was open, you go. You, and you don't just go and sit, you get involved. My dad was adamant about teaching his children about Jesus, about the love of Jesus. So, so eight year, almost eight years ago, we lost dad to cancer, which was very hard for my mom. Three years ago on Mother's Day, we lost my baby sister. She was 43 years old. Um, she had a son that just graduated from high school and she died from cancer. It was a devastating blow to the family. It was very, very hard for mom. So mom kind of became a little isolated. So we gave her some beads and I said, mom, if, if I get you some beads and stuff, will you make some necklaces for the shoe boxes? So mama went, set out to make some jewelry for the boxes to put into the boxes. And so I think you've probably done what, 2000 um, bracelets, necklaces to put into the shoe boxes. And then also, if you'll notice, I, you can't really see here, I've got some boxes in the back, but 
Mama is also an artist, which I can't draw stick people, but Mom likes to decorate the lids of the boxes. And Mom says, you know, when she's in her art room working, she says she, she can just feel the presence of the Lord and the excitement of knowing that a child is going to be open the box and a little girl is going to be wearing the necklace. And I heard one man say that your fingerprints, when you pack a shoebox, your fingerprints are all over this box, but your fingerprints are also all over the life of the child who receives this box. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, the impact is right here, the blessings here. But I'll tell you one that's even a little bit more personal. I have a daughter that is 31 now, and she lived a pretty rough life. And, you know, it's something that as a parent we pray, and we pray, and we pray for our daughter for many years. When I was approached to be the area coordinator of Operation Christmas Child, which I started um, a year ago in January in 2022, I accepted and said yes, and I was in the group today. And I told the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this for you. And I'm going to do my hardest and work as hard as I can to see as many souls to come to you. I want to do my part. I want to pack the boxes. I want to share with you that maybe don't know about shoe boxes and the impact that the shoe box can have. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone, Lord, and I'm going to put my daughter in your hand. You chase her. I'm going to work to make sure that children are hearing the gospel message. Lord, chase her down. So November of this past year in 2022, it was Collection Sunday. We have a week-long collection. It starts on a Monday. This year it will be November the 13th is when it will be starting. And it will go for eight days. So it will go from Monday to Monday. Last year, she came home on the weekend. And I told her, I said, baby, I'm not going to be home much. It's Collection Week. I'll be at the, you know, we have a collect. We're right here in Hillsboro. There's um, on Pea Ridge Road. Freedom Fellowship is where we'll take all of our boxes. I said, I'll be going around to the, I said, I'm not going to be home much. And she said, that's okay. I just need to come home. Her life was a mess. Her life was a mess. So she was home all that week, Sunday, and she knows when she comes home on the weekend, if she doesn't get up and go home early, she has to go to church with us. And it's not one of the things that we force her. She just knows out of respect she'll come to church with us. That Sunday, which would have been, I believe, November the 20th, she came to church with us. And the preacher preached the message. We stood for an altar call, and she pushed past me and her dad, went running down the aisle, gave her heart to the Lord. Amen. The blessings are on this side of the box. Yeah. I keep thinking of that verse in Luke 6.38, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, yes. pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. I dare you to give. See the blessing that God gives in return. These things don't come back void. What you give to the Lord, the Lord gives back so much bigger than what you can give. So I'm going to challenge you. Pack a box. Pack a box. Watch and see what God will do in your church. Watch and see what God will do in your lives. I know I'm living proof of what God can do because of Operation Christmas Child. So I do want to share just a minute, and I, I'll be done. What goes in a box? What goes in a box? Anything fun. Wow items. And like I said, you know, you can make jewelry. You can even put kits in so they can make their own. We do a lot of handmade gifts. We do t-shirt jump ropes, which is a lot of fun. You can have a crafting day with, we have, in many of our churches, we have like a crafting day where all of our women will come out and we do crafts. Um, you can make jump ropes, pencil bag, anything. Of course, boys love soccer balls and any kind of ball. Stuffed animals, anything. School supplies are a great thing. I heard him saying toothbrushes, yes. Toothbrushes are a great thing. Of course, you can't put toothpaste in there because of regulations through going through customs. A lot of places won't allow things to come through their customs. So you can send toothbrushes, but no toothpaste. Um, uh, you can send soap and washcloth. You can send, um, 
And I do recommend if you're doing ages anywhere from five to 14, school supplies are a great thing. Notebooks, um, pencils, crayons, things like that. Uh, these children, story after story after story, I hear where they open up their box, especially if you have, okay, so I have some sensitivities and we were collecting soap and we put them in this great big huge tote. And I don't know, we probably had a thousand bars of soap in there. And we opened it up, and I went, oh, the smell of soap with but kids when they open up the box, love because it's it's permeated everything in there. They've never smelled anything like that. And they said everything smelled new. They didn't know what that was. Because of a bar of soap that we take for granted. A bar of soap excites these children. So anything fun, anything fun. I have 35 boxes in the back. Um, our goal for our five counties this year is to collect 18,000 boxes. Um, last year we collected over 14,000 boxes. And here's the thing. The number 18,000, to me, we don't get any recognition if we break a record and have 18,000 boxes. We don't get any kind of accolades. We don't get phone calls. We don't get our names in the paper. It doesn't that. I don't care about having the most boxes. What I do care about is seeing those souls. Yeah. 18,000 babies that's going to hear the gospel right. message. So we've ch we're challenging our churches. 35 boxes. If each church does 35 more than what they did last year, we'll meet our goal of 18,000. So I'm going to challenge each of you. Not each of you to do 35 boxes. Don't, no, no, no. Don't, nobody likes that. That's it. No, we're done. No, no, no. As a church, I'm, I left 35 boxes here, but I have 15 more in my car. We'll make it 50, and I wouldn't be mad at that either. But if you set your mind to do two a month, you could do one in June, two in July, two in August, two in September, two in October, one in November. You have 10 boxes per family. <coughs> That's 10 boxes, and here's the thing. If you take those 10 boxes, you do 10 boxes, even if you do five boxes, even if you just do five boxes per family, an average of seven people, that's 35 people that's going to hear the gospel message because of your boxes. I can't help but think, when we get to heaven, can you imagine the reward of seeing the souls that have come to Jesus because you gave? Is that working? Yes. This is why we pack a box. So I'm going to challenge you. Pack a box. Hey, Rhonda. Yes. Uh, somebody had a question the other day. 